Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a fairly new watch from Zodiac with the Zodiac Super Seawolf World Time. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive, looking at this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout this video, if you have further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page where you can learn more, book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists or buy the watch as well. So guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. When it comes to brands that are on the rise, but are still relatively underrated from a Swiss watchmaking perspective in the range of a thousand to $2,000, I think Zodiac has to be one of the brands that needs to be just brought up in the conversation. Zodiac nowadays is operated under the fossil group structure and group of brands, but when it comes to real dive watch heritage and just Swiss watchmaking heritage, Zodiac needs to be involved in the conversation. I think one of the best representations of this is looking back to 1953 when many commercially available dive watches were flooding the market, mostly with icons such as the Rolex Submariner or the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. But there was another watch that was thrown into the ring and that was with the Zodiac Seawolf. Zodiac past that date released models that were truly in alignment with specifications that match the tool watch requirements for many different walks of life, including being widely adopted by U.S. military personnel during the Vietnam War being available at several different PXs. But today we're looking at a GMT-style variant that's going to be pulling from kind of the history of the brand, mostly at their aerospace GMTs, and now being reclaimed or repositioned as the Super Seawolf World Timer. A versatile and well-constructed timepiece that offers a lot for its $1,800 price point. So let's take a closer look. Now, starting with the dimensions of this piece, we have a case size of 40 millimeters. That's actually measuring from the bezel edge. The central case is 39 millimeters. Thickness is 13.5 millimeters and a lug to lug dimension just south of 48 millimeters at 47.8 millimeters. In regards to the wear on the wrist, this one's gonna wear pretty true to its size, if not slightly smaller, closer to a 39 and a half millimeter case. As mentioned, the bezel is going to overstep the outer boundary of the case itself, as the underside is not going to feel the presence as much as it's going to optically look at on the top. Although the thickness is not insignificant at 13 and a half millimeters, it is still going to be rather constrained considering that it's going to be of a dive watch variety with 200 meters of water resistance here. And considering of that 13 and a half millimeters of thickness, at least about a half a millimeter or so is going to come from that dome sapphire crystal. A dome screw down crown is found in its traditional three o'clock case position to operate the watch's functions. There are no surprises here in how this one works. Unscrew the crown in the first position to hand wind the automatic so prod movement inside to power the movement, then pull the crown to the second position to adjust both the GMT hand and the date. Turning the crown in this position clockwise will advance the GMT hand forward, while turning the crown counterclockwise will advance the date wheel. With the crown pulled out all the way, you then can adjust all the hands in unison while stopping the second hand in the process to set precise time. Between the screw down crown and the screw down case back, the Super Seawolf World Time here is water resistant up to 200 meters, making it a very capable watch for a myriad of water activities. So now with this world time function, we probably should discuss how you can actually set the time. Now, how I always like to look at these types of watches when setting a GMT or a world time when dealing with something like a third party movement like a Soprod is always think about what hand cannot be isolated first. You first want to set that time and then you will work into setting the additional time that can be isolated. So in this instance, what we wanna do is set our local time appropriately to align with the time in which we are going to be present at. Once we have that time set up, we then would have a corresponding set time with our 24 hour scale. If you wanted to measure the same time zone, you would want it to mirror that specific point. Or if you want to track an additional time zone, say you're traveling, for example, you will then adjust that red hour GMT hand to that appropriate time. And really where the world time complication will come in handy is where you can align the specific city or time zone with that 24 hour GMT scale or that hand. And then at that point, you could use that as a reference to see different time zones across the world. This is basically adapting a GMT GMT movement to have some world time functionality, which is incredibly useful. The external rotating bezel is a 24 click bezel and features a hardened mineral crystal with a red bezel insert to have a nice level of contrast from the rest of the dial elements and match that GMT hand at the center of the dial. A sapphire insert or ceramic may have been a better choice for longevity and resistance to scratches, but it certainly does look the part in kind of matching this retro 1960s, 70s vibe that it feels like many Zodiacs are pulling towards. The bezel action is crisp and literally no lateral play to speak of here. Making our way 
way to the bracelet, we have a very good three-length oyster-style bracelet that is installed between 20-millimeter lugs. It features a uniform brush finish applied to all the surfaces that match the case and has a milled security clasp, which is solidly constructed. Because the links run relatively long, there aren't that many removable links, and unfortunately no half links, so precise sizing could potentially be an issue. However, the clasp does offer four points of micro-adjustment. The clasp features a fold-over lock, which is difficult to get your fingernail under. I've actually opted for just pulling it from the sides rather than trying to stick a fingernail and flip it up to unlock. So this is one point that I think could certainly be improved with the design. The case finish is rather consistent throughout. Brush finishes are located on all the anterior surfaces, including that bracelet. Along the edge of the bezel as well as casting down the lugs is a polished edge, and then on the case sides are vertical brushing. Moving over to the front of the watch, we are met with the convex sapphire crystal that provides an unobstructed view of the dial within. The dial consists of two parts, an outer chapter ring in a matte black with boldly printed white Arabic numerals, marking off the 24 hours that are used between the GMT and the world time functions. As we move inward, we have a contrasting bright silver dial with a radial brush texture applied to it, casting a sunburst effect when interacting under the light. Along the edge of this area, we have applied steel hour markers that have a dual finish to them set within a simple black minute track. The brush center area is slightly elevated between the polished areas on the side, giving the illusion of a faceted and angular design. Paired with the markers along the outboard side are individual rectangular loom plots, including a truncated marker at the 3 o'clock dial position, where we also find the faceted and bordered date window. Printed in black ink just below the 12 is the Zodiac logo, as well as the Super Seawolf name just below in a cursive font choice. More of that font typography is going to be used at the lower part of the dial, which reads World Time Automatic. The cursive font is fairly bold and generally easy to read, although the font itself is a bit generic and maybe a little bit too weighty in comparison to the other font. Charged with telling the time are a set of simple baton hour and minute hands containing luminous material. The second hand also contains a small rectangular segment of loom, as does the tip of the red GMT hand. In terms of low light legibility, the loom is adequate. I wouldn't say it's the best in the price range, but certainly will do the job. Turning the Super Seawolf over, we have a solid screw down case back housing the Soprod C125 movement inside. The case back is straightforward, supplying some reference information along with the logo. Here you'll find the water resistance, the model number, and the serial number, but inside, again, that Soprod C125 movement, which is a quality alternative to the popular ETA 28932, a GMT caliber. Now, while Soprod may not be a household name, it should be a somewhat familiar one to viewers of either of my channels, as you've seen it in other watches that we've covered before, maybe as an example with the Baltic Aquascaf GMT. And when it comes to Zodiac, they've been another brand that has adopted the use of Soprod movements. Anecdotally, with hands-on experience actually wearing a Soprod movement regularly, I will say that I did not see any discrepancies compared to other movements. And listening to a lot of buyers or collectors, they share in that sentiment. This movement is not going to be a true GMT movement. So in other words, it's not going to have an isolated hour hand instead of isolated 24 hour hand, that GMT hand. Uh, discussing how that's going to be set is going to be a little bit different. In a true GMT, you could then isolate your local time rather than your home time that you have here. This adds one additional step with setting the time, but still offers a lot of the same functionality with way less of a premium for the price tag. In terms of general operation for this movement, we're looking at 28,800 vibrations per hour, 4 hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding, hacking stop in the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and has a 42 hour power reserve, and is providing some anecdotal evidence for accuracy. When testing at five different positions, it was running on average between plus five seconds to plus 10 seconds a day. So, now to unpack looking at this Zodiac Super Seawolf World Time. In the past five years, Zodiac has really had a remarkable rise amongst watch enthusiast circles and just general mass market appeal. I think they've done a great job of walking that line of what the brand represented in the past with a lot of their heritage design elements, while also not being afraid to have some more daring pursuit in a modern package. And I think they've really done a nice job with many of their different collections and models. And I think this is another example of doing that quite well. There are some small things that I would just bring up when looking at a watch like this. Uh, 
Uh, the bracelet could be a little bit improved at the clasp. It's a little bit cumbersome to be able to get your finger underneath that fold over lock. It's not a complete deal breaker, but still something that I think that the brand could certainly improve in the future. And I think it would be nice for them to adopt sapphire or ceramic inserts for their rotating bezels in the future. But otherwise, you're getting a lot of the same value proposition that comes from Zodiac with many of their offerings. And I think much of it is going to be uh, found in a watch like this in terms of where it's positioned. You're getting a dive watch with GMT world time functionality at a price range that typically is not going to occupy this amount of breadth of complication. The case is very wearable. I think Zodiac has always nailed this to really hit that Goldilocks zone and just know who the types of consumers are that are going to buy their watches. They're going to be more just enthusiasts that are looking to have a complimentary piece to their collection or look for that first Swiss dive watch, for example. And you're also getting a Swiss made watch that's going to edge on a bit more daring flair. This is actually a bit more restrained than most of their designs, believe it or not, even with that red rotating bezel, but still does offer that extra flair that I think will allow this one to complement maybe a pre-existing collection with a lot of watches at your disposal or one that's just getting started that just wants to go ahead and show their own individual personality with a watch that's tied to the wrist and a very quality one at that. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel, so really would appreciate that. But also, if you're in the market for this watch, check it out. Link in the description. It's available on teddybaldasar.com. We're a full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. Also are going to offer a full factory warranty for all of our products. So if something goes wrong, you're going to be covered. And also, this is how we fund all of our future content on this channel, as well as on our main channel, helping to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all.